Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Match Ball podcast. Now I know international break is going on and there is not a lot of football to watch and the football that is there to watch is at a very bad timing which is usually 1:15 1:30 a.m. So I figured let's invite one of uh, my favorite people to collaborate with Menace and the Monk back to the channel. First of all Nidhi bhai welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel in fact. Glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling me again yaar. Uh, I I really like love your content and uh, you know thank you for having me back back again. It's it's really the, the pleasure is the pleasure is all all ours of course. Now uh, like I've mentioned in previous episodes Siddhant who's my co-host he's not with us because he's preparing for his exam so best of luck to yeah. him. And uh, we have a absentee from Manas and the Monk as well. So we are joined by the Monk but the Manas is not there. Uh, when i spoke to manas about it he put it very nicely he's taking he's taking an international break from this as well so uh, we hope we, i i can get manas back on another episode as well nidhi bhai first of all uh, how is your international break going with you know a lack of football how is it going yeah so i'll tell you something international football without without football basically i i consider international break as without football kyunki utna investment nahi hota honestly Uh, right it's good but obviously we miss football uh, so that's one but acha uh, yaar i mean i've been able to spend some time more time with my kid uh, that way on a personal front <laughs> this weekend was good uh, but yeah i think uh, we all miss football yaar football should come back very soon yeah and and you know international football i i was just uh, i mean we are recording this right after a live that you have had at, at your channel and one thing you said this that there is not that emotional investment in international football which is there in an interne- in a club football simply because you and i or even manas himself we are not player worshipers we don't look at yeah. an individual player as something that excites us about football we look at a team we look at the sport so exactly. international football i think one with its irregularity with with its less frequency and second right. with the number of matches and the quality of matches that take place it's not that exciting and plus there is no india so why would we be that yeah. invested yeah and it's good to watch some football without that level of emotional high level emotional adrenaline pumped whatever right acha <laughs> yaar it's like having your favorite dish but without the calories Ah right, that's a, that's a very good way good way to put it. And I think last night, in fact, uh, so if you were a player worshipper and a Liverpool fan, so there would only yeah. be one player currently who you would be idolizing, who is Mohamed Salah, and he did not have a good night last yeah. night. And yeah. there was a brilliant. I mean, I don't know. There was there was a laser show which also had a football match in between. Given the <laughs> sheer amount of <laughs> lasers that were shown at Egyptian players yeah. by the Senegal uh, fans, uh, before we get into whatever we are going to discuss, uh, what is your take on whatever that happened last night? Away, away from the football. I mean, not the result. We know Senegal qualified, Egypt did not qualify. Away from that, yeah. this laser thing and all. What's your stance on that? Yeah, see, honestly, what I would say is that um, this laser thing is not new in African football. uh this by the way even the egypt fans did to senegal players and staff when they were in the first leg um okay i i don't think it is right uh it it has to be distracting yaar however good you are for example if you are a very good driver and you know you're driving somewhere and i just point a laser in your eyes you can't drive well right especially during penalties it becomes very very important so uh i am um, and by the way uh, a lot of people are making this about but we have always had lasers at uh, in african football um this happened to schmeichel as well during the euros if you remember uh, yeah, yeah. there was just one laser but one laser can be distracting it doesn't matter 1 500 my point is when you are going inside abhi wo moment pe to get rid of all the lasers is not possible because how many players how many people will you go to and tell you know just you hand over your lasers or whatever right. i think some stricter checking because it has to be distracting i mean how how is it not like i mean people are saying that you know but he knows where the goal is he should just hit <laughs> um, it's it's not that simple right yeah, uh, yeah. i mean uh, like i said you you may be a very good driver but let me just point a laser in your eyes while you're driving what's going to happen yeah yeah 
and even before a penalty kick they know where the goal is but that doesn't mean every penalty is always scored like even if a centimeter if you place a ball and it moves a centimeter that can change uh, your exactly. your prediction of wherever the ball would go so i don't find this argument very uh, you know convincing and uh, i think this world cup we would see we should ideally see something that we saw in the 2010 world cup with banning wuvu zela if i'm not wrong that was the south Correct. african world cup Correct. i think Correct. we should see something like this in qatar to avoid player distractions otherwise you know it will leave a bad uh, b- bad you know what you say Taste you know mind. in the minds of everyone that's all yeah honestly i think it should have been done already <laughs> uh, matlab uh, it was very bizarre to see so many lasers being allowed i mean i've, I've been to fifa events and you know they, they don't let you take you know food inside or water inside but a laser you know it can't be so lax right so that is i i hope not just lasers anything that is distracting to the players uh, it should not be allowed right exactly uh, again uh, there can be a very complex conversation about flares and all i know liverpool yeah, yeah. fans love flares and smoke bombs and everything but i think they are not as n- nowhere similar in terms of distracting who as well as too loud players right. cannot hear yeah. teammates or things like that so i am hoping that this at least gives them a impetus to do something immediately about it absolutely absolutely i think i think that's a fair assessment of the situation that you have that you have said and last night sala did not have again a good night and uh, yeah. you know as as a neutral or as a person who's not that invested in international football you wouldn't be too bothered by it but as a person who's heavily invested in liverpool you must be glad yeah. that he's coming back and hopefully his now entire focus would be on club football given that this is probably the most intense end of the season that is approaching for liverpool i think ever since klopp took over if i'm not wrong right 100% yeah see first of all what i'd like to say is that it as a liverpool fan it feels bad to see sala not play the world cup because remember i mean the next world cup he'll not be in his prime right right that is that is even if egypt qualify right precisely uh, precisely so but senegal were the better team um, they deserve to go through their overall on a footballing level we have to be fair they are a better team i'm, I'm delighted for sadio mane he just won the afcon now he is going to play in the world cup uh, third time for senegal so big deal for them um, right but coming to sala i think that sala is the kind of player who thrives in you know when things don't go his way last season when we were nowhere near the top 4 and you know it will it, it we look doomed to you know have a even outside top 6 we might finish it, it felt like that so he in i think the january rally, period right and, yeah he was the one to rally the fans and you know he played football out of his skin so i am very excited to have sala back i am but honestly one thing i'd like to say is that i'm delighted that there are no injuries uh, that is one yeah. thing that really bothers me about international football yeah, yeah so yeah. you know no injuries and to have a sala f- foot fit and focused will be will be amazing because we do have like you said yeah, it is going to be insane this this april period is going to be something that we've never seen before it is going to be amazing whatever the end result might be but yeah yeah and i think the uh, i think the this could be i mean i know you guys won the ucl under klopp but i think whatever the outcome of this month would be it would still be the the month where everyone is united or everyone should ideally be united and rallying the liverpool players like anything probably more than what was required in the champions league final i mean do you do you feel that way as well um could you repeat your question rohan i i don't think so so uh, in this month I, okay so in the champions league final if the the fans rallied their players and rallied behind the players at this level would april and with the coming month of april fans would have to go here or probably even higher than that 100% yeah see uh, i'll tell you something uh, you know whatever club that you support uh, you know fans play a very big role 
and field um, outside of the social media jabs and everything you know um, you know i've been to anfield uh, right and and it's not even my opinion i mean so many players have players managers etc have spoken about anfield fan support has to be and i think it will be i don't think you know that is something that as a manager klopp will have to even ask for uh right. i think the fans are going to be very very excited it is going to be this is probably the greatest and dare i say it greatest time period as a liverpool fan in our lifetimes at least it is insane the kind of you know the level football is being played at right you look at man city you look at chelsea we played chelsea thrice this season every time they have matched us Right, the, right, the, right. The Carabao Cup final could have gone. If Chelsea would have won it, no, nobody could say Chelsea have not deserved it. The right, level of right. football is just insane. And when did we see a League Cup final so closely contested? Precisely, precisely. That level is going to go up here with City. Because right. Let's right. be honest, City are at a different planet when it comes to the level of football they play. So precisely. yeah, I mean, I I agree with you. Fans will have to be at their best. Yeah, and like. You play Man City a couple of times. You play Benfica, so it's City, Benfica, City, Benfica, right? Or it might be Benfica, City, Benfica, City. One of those two. So we play, uh, yeah. So we play Benfica, and then we play City, and okay. uh, yeah, then we play Benfica again, and then we play City in the FA Cup. So, right. Yeah. So you know Benfica. If you look at it as at a from a neutral perspective, now Chelsea played Benfica in the 2012 Champions League uh, quarter final, if I'm not wrong. Oh, yeah it was a quarter final and uh, we played them in the europa league final so and we have come you know we, we have uh, bettered them on both those occasions and portuguese opposition is not really that competitive when it comes to yeah. against the english opposition granted because of the the level of football that the english opposition plays but given this circumstance given the circumstances in which liverpool is right now where you have man city on either side of the of that tie with one a title probably a premier league title deciding match and an fa cup uh, you know deciding match benfica which is an easy opposition does it suddenly become a difficult opposition or a you know higher or a bigger obstacle than anticipated see it's not about it's not about you know a bigger opposition or a smaller opposition they have they have come here beating one of the very good teams in this competition right i want when people say look and i'll also not be delusional enough to say that you know it's it's as tough as a chelsea or a man city or a uh, atletico madrid yes right. on paper they they are you know slightly easier compare uh, let let's for the lack of a better word but they are here because they've earned it precisely they are a dangerous side they are a dangerous side and people forget that for someone to have a bad tie you just need to have 15 20 bad minutes correct? correct absolutely yeah you in 15 20 minutes if somebody scores like two three goals against you and if, especially if it's a team like that then they'll just sit back precisely it's done right correct so easy a lot of people are already talking about bayern and city liverpool fans <laughs> right? right we have to get there first we have to get correct. there first so um look i'm confident i uh, with a liverpool team i'll I, th- with this liverpool team i'll be confident against any opposition but we may we must not take benfica lightly you, right. you have to give them the respect that they deserve right 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 and i think you know if you recall two seasons ago uh, olympic leon had that the insane run exactly. in the champions league i think they reached the semis where they finally lost they beat, they beat man city yeah they beat man city and i think they beat juventus before that and i think this season also uh, you know villarreal is one of those teams in my opinion i was just going to say i was just going so, to say so like everyone and you know everyone rated ajax also at such a high level given that blistering yeah. form they had in the group stage and for benfica which is relatively unknown or known but you know not uh, feared to knock yeah. ajax out that is a big statement similarly villarreal to knock juventus out that is a big statement so you know we i think it's good to see that we have reached that level of football uh, to watch where even the so called weaker teams are never disrespected just because they are perceived as weaker 
right weak yeah, exactly exactly i mean they have players that can hurt you uh, and let's be honest look ye these kind of teams now you it's like a wild card right you don't know right because for example you know obviously when you play and it's not to say that we don't do our research i'm sure klopp has been extensively watching benfica right that we so. drawn them. yeah and but you know clubs like for example had we drawn city so we are very familiar with what city are going to do they they as good as they are we at least there is some level of familiarity right right you it's a, it's like going against a wild card so Precisely. that's the element of surprise is also there yeah and you know like you said 15 20 minutes of bad football can literally you know i think that was what happened with atletico madrid against liverpool at anfield right exactly. you played a very good exactly. game and i think few errors and few bad football who completely knock you out of the champions league precisely so again in knockout football things can be very very different yeah right right so yeah so fa cup you know you are in, you have won the carabao cup which is yeah. uh, i mean uh, it was a big uh, you know no, it, it it see let's be very honest we don't rate the carabao cup as much as we rate the ucl That's or as true. much as we rate the fa cup and uh, but but the way we lost the final when yeah. we had like three or four open chances no okay not open but easy chances i mean how mason mount did not score that that exactly. goal that is exactly. still like a you know a shocker for me and uh, given that we were you know roasting fernandez and united fans for missing against middlesbrough this was even worse for us so okay so you have won the carabao cup now you have an fa cup you have a premier league where you are six points or three points or four points were some single very small number of points behind man city i think you're four points one behind point. oh it's one point okay one point, point behind okay and uh, you have a match against them in april you have ucl yeah. which with benfica like we said not underdogs but you know you would do your research and ensure that you get through with the tie so quadruple when do you start <laughs> dreaming when do you decide like is it two trophies is it three trophies is it the win against man city when do you rationally start okay i knowing how you are you will give me answers very rationally so i want the rational answer and the you know liverpool fanboy who doesn't want to take rationality into picture answer i want two answers from you yeah the uh, premier league i'll i'll be i'll be over the moon if we beat man city I think Premier League that then it becomes very very interesting because then City are chasing us. They have right. not been in this position ever where they are chasing us. Right, right, right. Um, and that too at such a crucial period of the te- uh, this thing. The season we won the league, we were quite clear. Uh, so I think that's there. Yeah, but the thing is, it, it's not about a rational answer. The reality is that the quadruple. Why is it so complicated? See, the reason why it has never been done by anybody. is because not just you everything around you also has to be perfect right you have to for example if you're talking about the carabao cup uh, you know you had a few referee decisions that went against you right nabi keta it could have easily been a red card right uh, right right, right. You know, right? Uh, i still think lukaku was offside but i think nabi keta red card tha it was there right but again not getting too much into that game but uh, the thing is those kind of things have to go in favor of you those small things right quadruple right. when do i start believing look honestly uh, only when we are i think the fa cup final happens after the champions league final or before the champions league I final i think it happens that. before i think yeah. champions league final is the last club last. Uh, match and after yeah. and after that the season's done <laughs> i quadruple i'll start only believing if we get to the Champions League final, and you know once that kick off, quadruple is very tough. Yeah, see the thing is, who are you up against? Who you are up against? City. You are up against Chelsea. You are up against uh, you know um, Real Madrid, uh, Bayern Munich. These these are clubs that will fight for their lives. Right. Um, I don't want to talk about quadruple too much because I think that's more of a social media driven. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's more of a social media driven thing so for example and i'll tell you what um, if we win if we win two more trophies 
from right. here on i'll be delighted i'll be delighted if we won either premier league or champions league also right one trophy either the premier league or the champions league i'm very happy that I'll that's top you of what, your preference yeah but i'll tell you what on social media if we win from here on if we win the premier league we win the champions league and we may, and we lose the fa cup final semi final against city klopp will be called a failure <laughs> so that's a, that's the social media thing right 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 so, right, right but yeah uh, realistically speaking when do i start believing when we get there yaar see quadruple uh, it's 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 more of a media driven thing uh, i think it's 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 damn 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 tough yaar it's it's not it's going to be insanely tough to win the quadruple And right, we, right. To, to win the quadruple, we have to beat City twice in six days. <laughs> right? Uh, if, if we have, then we have to beat Bayern twice. If we get to the semi-final, and assuming Bayern get there, because right. why are right. we thinking that Bayern will win? Absolutely, exactly. Right? They are also playing at upside. Uh, right. Then, even even if we get to the final, you are playing either Chelsea or Man City or the other two. Right. Right. Which are also. Right. extremely tough sides to play atletico right so it's very tough here it's very tough but one game at a time one game at a time yeah right 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 and i think for us as chelsea fans i think the two injuries reese james and ben chilwell right. kind of okay. knocked out our title ambitions like i was calculating with a friend the other day for yeah. chelsea to win the premier league we need man city to lose four times which looks very unlikely in nine games yeah four times if if they lose three times and a single draw that's level on points and go they have a better goal difference and here we have not even spoken about liverpool yeah. so i mean i i really want to wish believe and hope and be that hopeless optimistic that you know chelsea will win the premier league this season but i know that's not going to happen and given that we are you know not i mean we don't have that consistency element we'll play very good for like four or five games and then we'll have a draw against burnley out of nowhere or we'll have something off the pitch that is rocking us that will then yeah. you know affect the morale or whatever so i don't think we would wherever consistency is important we have not been very well at it but right. you know cup ties we are known as a cup team unfortunately and that's good also because the last cup we won was the champions league So I won't complain yeah, yeah. about that, but yeah. uh, I, 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 I mean, it would be very, very uh, unrealistic of me to wish for Chelsea to win the Premier League. I don't think it will happen. Do you? Do you think? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, one thing I'd like to say uh, that as a Chelsea fan, you should be really proud of uh, the manager and the squad. Uh, I don't know about uh, you know what is happening with your ownership, and I. D- Honestly, I cannot give an opinion on that. Right, right. An Rightfully so. Right. Who am so. I to say whatever is happening, right, wrong, whatever it is? My, right. my opinion doesn't matter. Right. But I think the way uh, Tuchel has rallied everybody, that the way Tuchel has uh, you know got everyone together. Uh, you right. talk about players like Kai Havertz, who are what twenty one years old and twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay for my own ticket and all. That's an incredibly Much more thing to say. Right, so, right, right. Chelsea have had injury issues. Uh, you know, obviously, whatever is happening right now, nobody thought something like this could happen. Absolutely. Um, look, I think you ought to be proud of uh, your team, your manager, uh, whatever Absolutely. happens from here. Uh, I think that some period of flux is to be expected. Uh, right. A new owner comes in, and you know, uh, things won't be hunky dory. Especially when your captain is Roman Abramovich, absolutely, they won't be they won't be hunky dory right from the start. Uh, right, but I think but I think one thing that has worked very well in favor of Chelsea uh, is the manager they have right now. Imagine going through this time uh, with someone like a Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho. As, right. as right. I know, I know he's he's a legend for you guys, and he's yeah, great, yeah, yeah. and I, all those things. I don't disagree, of course, right. but it would be a I don't know. It would be a pain to be with Jose. It wouldn't although, be what it was right now. That's yeah, all we at, can, you know. Although say. the siege mentality with Jose works, he has used that a lot of times. But not right. this, exactly. this is a legit. This is a legitimate crisis. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, and but, but 
I mean, you 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 might win the Champions League. Maybe you know the Premier League. You are saying that it is out of bounds, but Champions League, you never know. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think we are facing uh, Real Madrid, and uh, yeah. you know, I wouldn't wish any player to get injured, but I wouldn't mind if Benzema does not play either of those ties, because yeah, yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, even if it's uh, you know personal reason or whatever, I wouldn't wish you know to him be injured, but I wouldn't mind if he stays, if he opts out or whatever. Be the be the reason for it, but uh, exactly. yeah, I mean, but, uh, he's going for that is, your uh, going yeah, exactly, for and that, that is scary. I mean, like if his soul and soul goal is that, and you know the way he played against PSG for him to single handedly okay. bring them back in the tie and then win the tie. I, I but but uh, regarding the Madrid PSG thing, I just wanted to ask you: Would you look at it as a you know comeback by Madrid? Or a capitulation, or you know, a downfall, or a you know, in implosion of PSG. What would you you know rate it as? Look, in in any um, in in ninety nine percent of cases, it is a combination of both. I right. think, I think, you know, it was a bit of PSG capitulating more than Real right. making that come. That's the way I see it. Taking nothing away from Real Madrid, by the way, I think that Benzema, absolutely. Like, I love Karim Benzema. I think he's brilliant. Right, he's so 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 underrated by everybody. Uh, but right, I I talked about small things. Right, that that, that refereeing decision of right. Donnarumma against Donnarumma and all that. Abhi, again, I'm not saying it, what was right, wrong, whatever it is, but it went in Real Madrid's favor. Precisely. So. Um, but we have to give credit to, I, and I I wouldn't call it a Real Madrid ca- comeback as much as a Karim Benzema comeback. I think he precisely carried it, right? Precisely, so he was brilliant. Uh, but I think PSG um, at this level, I mean, you're two 0 up, forty five minutes to go. I think uh, Pochettino a little bit, you know, he could have managed it better. Let me put it that precisely, way. precisely. I mean, you blame you can you can blame players, you can blame you know individual yeah. errors, but yeah, a referee is also unfair decisions, but ultimately it does boil down to how the manager laid out the squad and exactly. laid out the tactics before the game was actually played. So, up to an extent, you can say that it was Pochettino to blame. But yeah, yeah. I mean, taking nothing away from away from Benzema, who you know you can, I mean, you can bring him into the discussion of best players in the world right now on form. I mean, yeah. for me, in my opinion, there are three right now. One is Benzema, one is Salah, one is Lewandowski. In no particular order. Right, right. Yeah. So and uh, honestly, and honestly, Rohan, uh, uh, this is another social media thing. I, I think you know this. That it is like everything is a comparison. Everything <laughs> is uh, this player is better right. than that player, or that player is better than this player. Um, I again, thoda. I mean, I, I'll sound like a little bit of an uncle, but. <laughs> I think that it takes away. I think it takes away from the essence of watching football in a bit. Right, and, right. You, know, you you focus too much on a player. Uh, players, of course. I mean, there are certain players who are an absolute joy to watch. Ronaldinho, outside of Liverpool, is my favorite player. Uh, right. You know, but I think people need to understand that it's a team game. Uh, single players, ठीक I mean, you can be a fan and all that, but. Uh, that gets too much. I mean, right. player or that. for example, right now, I don't know why Eden Hazard's name has come up because Salah has <laughs> I him. saw your tweets. I saw and, your tweets. And Hazard is so good. And Hazard is so good. He's, so, right. he's one of the best players to play in the Premier League. Right. Why does it have to be? But now, don't compare him or don't, don't. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, precisely you, my point. You don't need to. You don't need to. I mean, and they they like each other so much. They are, I think, I don't know if friends, but they, there's a lot. And of I think they played at played with each other Chelsea. in the Chelsea. same Chelsea squad at a point of time, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So again, <laughs> it, I'm going on a bit. It of doesn't. Effort. Yeah, I can understand. And and you know, for I mean, Hazard gets the preferential treatment internationally because the Belgian squad is far better than the Egyptian squad. So if you idolize this, like I'm just adding more, uh, you know, rele- uh, you know, to your point, adding to your point that if you take away the team, the player obviously is not going to shine, which is the case <laughs> with Egypt, and which is not the case with Belgium. Simply put, 
I mean, Belgium exactly. have whatever that golden generation is called. It was because of the team and not because of a single player. You had multiple exactly. players that made the golden generation. But yeah, like like you said, like we are we are straying a bit away from you know what we wanted yeah. to talk about. Now coming back to Liverpool and now the obvious biggest elephant in the room is Salah and his contract, which <laughs> every single <laughs> Liverpool fan, you know, I I can only imagine you know you waking up just praying that there is no such. uh you know legitimate mm. contract development which is not in your favor and uh, you know a friend of mine wrote a good article about this and you know he gave some me- methods of how to uh, you know value a player and how, what could be the wages and all but you know coming directly to the crux is that sala delivered a fantastic output for years and years for uh, as a liverpool player now what is stopping fsg from literally saying yellow how much soever you want we are willing to pay that because he is right now in the prime it's not that he's you know 34 35 like benzema yeah. is so what is what is stopping them from doing that what's your take on it look honestly one thing i'd like to say is that you know a lot of people say that sala is greedy i don't think that is the case uh, i think that you know players who are at the best uh, if you are very good at your job you're going to ask for the best salary right <clears throat> so if you are very good at your business you're going to ask for or work towards the greatest possible right. revenue right, right right so but equally i don't get fans who say just give him whatever he wants see right, right. what is stopping fsg i don't know exactly but look i mean in this summer we have given contracts to fabinho alisson trent robertson uh you know henderson these are the players right now if 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 let's say van dijk is at a certain amount of money and you give sala let's say 500k then why doesn't you know fabinho or uh, you know van dijk comes and says you know but i am also the best at my position right i i want that kind of money right why can't you give it to me right, right the right. way the way liverpool structure the the way we have built this success there is a lot of in house like dressing room harmony is a very big thing in this in this team whatever that's a big reason behind the success right right when you when you do those kind of things you know the problem is that you know then you create a very different atmosphere right that is right. one reason what what i think we we are being stopped at and a lot of football fans they think that you know contracts are a reward for the work that you do uh, or the you know <clears throat> uh, results that you've brought on right owners right. might not look at that way owners might look at The, you know reports and say okay what does the next th- four years of mohammed salah look like honestly as right. a fan i would i would i pray every day he signs a new contract right right because we he is absolutely vital to liverpool's success and honestly for salah also there is no better club for mohammed salah than liverpool right yeah but yep. these are not simple conversations it's, it's a complicated question that you know we that is in front of us I like to say one thing though: the longer this drags on, the more pop, the more powerful Salah and more than Salah, his agent. Precisely. I think it's it's his agent pulling a lot of strings. Uske he has one client. Is <laughs> <laughs> it's his brother who's the agent, right? Or no, or was not him. okay? No, I think no, it's no, someone else. Yeah. So he. Has I think one that is Harry Kane. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. He has one client, <laughs> and he is trying to get the best deal out of everybody. Rightfully so. Like. Yeah, nobody is at fault, but that guy, I think the way he conducts himself, who he is trying to be that super agent, Mino Raiola mold is trying right. to get into that. Right, 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 right. But that's not working out for him, um, and it's it's currently at an impasse, unfortunately. Right. But let's see where we end up. Let's see where we end up. It is going yeah, to yeah, be interesting, yeah. but hopefully he signs a new contract, man. I mean. Yeah, man, and uh, uh, even for the prem, you know, you wouldn't want a player like Salah to not be in the prem, oh, and yeah. and like if I go one step further, catering to what Twitter wants, then for from <laughs> FPL perspective also, you wouldn't want Salah out of the out of the the selection because he delivers yeah. points like anything. So I don't know, do you play FPL regularly or you just like you don't get I'm time a, to do that? I'm an I'm an FPL noob here. I made I made a room. I made a team. Uh, there is a there is a competition going on uh, for our yeah. channel. So uh, 
I think you are participating as well. Yeah, basically, yeah, I am, I am. yeah. So basically, if you win, you get a jersey. Uh, okay. But uh, okay. No, I haven't got the time here. Yeah. I haven't got the time, <laughs> and I don't understand it. This triple captain and wild card, whatever <laughs> these terms are, these are all Greek and Latin to me. I don't. I, 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 I really don't know what they mean. Like, what is triple captain? I don't know. <laughs> triple captain i mean i you you must know the definition right like at least I naam se to pata hoga i don't, don't know f- <laughs> if, if it, so if you keep sala as a triple captain and sala gives let's say 10 points in a in a in a in a match you in your team get 30 points that's it so it should should it be called triple points yeah but triple points <laughs> doesn't sound as cool as you know triple captain Oh, I mean, okay. it's it's like we discussed before recording. Like Premier Pro could have given a better, easier language for a new person to understand, but they don't. It doesn't sound cool. It doesn't sound cool. Or you know, wild card. Wild card is just like you know, every half season. Yeah. So every season, two times you get a chance to completely change your squad just hmm. to you know accommodate you know any injuries and everything. But you get there only once every mid season. Every half season you get it once. So two times a season. that is that is what you get and free hit is basically if you have a double game week of only certain teams if let's say four teams ka double week hai so then you can only change for one week with free transfers and then after that and match are, it comes back and dude there are people with like uh, machine le- le- uh, machine learning models and all <laughs> on fpl yeah, yeah yeah people do that it's a, it's a very serious thing i it i is, understand but i don't get it yeah 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 and i think outside of us where there is that fantasy football and all of that yeah. you know unka jo hai i don't know i think in india the equivalent is ipl but you know ipl uh, yeah ipl is there dream 11 and all is also there for the you know those who want to you know win a competition and yeah. uh, win a competition with money and uh, i think in uk the fpl is one thing that you know has tapered into people who don't even watch football So you know, I I have friends who follow FPL, but they don't watch football. They just watch the scores, just to see if their player has played and won and whatever of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Anyways, coming back, you know, Salah is also a big FPL asset. But now, if we just assume for a second that Salah is to leave, and he yeah. leaves before he uh, signs a contract, so you know, Liverpool do get a good sum out of it. Yeah. What are his potential destinations? in your mind where he could thrive look the most obvious one is psg uh, because uh, okay um, mbappe is going to leave to for real madrid right and uh, he can directly just play on the right wing i think right. uh, psg is the most obvious one uh, people were talking about real madrid i think real's uh, strategy has changed a little bit Uh, right. they are not going for these uh, mega money superstars uh, because you know uh, see the reason they if if real has to get mohammed salah first of all they have to pay at least 90 to 100 million and on right. top of that the wages are going to be very high right right why would they not think that if you are going to pay so much anyway and we are getting mbappe to play for us potentially uh, on a free card free transfer he mostly will be on a free transfer yeah, yeah, the yeah. wages will be high. Why yeah. wouldn't they think of getting Haaland? Mbappe and Salah sort of play the similar role. Why wouldn't they think of getting Haaland? Right? If they have to spend that money, they would rather look right. at a player who is right. going to solve their issues for the next, you know, eight ten years. Right. 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 Uh, having said so, you can't rule Real completely out. They, you, I mean, they they have the means to get it. Uh, there were links with Barcelona, which I I find very difficult uh, because if Barcelona. Right now, to for Salah to go leave Liverpool and go to Barcelona, it has to be a money-driven decision. Precisely, precisely. There is without no no other way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is there is no disrespect to Barcelona, but Barcelona are right now quite a few notches behind Liverpool. Precisely, right. Um. So, uh, I I think that you know they'll have to pay a lot, and they've already made that the mistake. They're still you know. uh no seeing their burns from you know what they right. have done so i don't <laughs> think that that is going to be an option um, right so uh, the other option is of course clubs like man city chelsea which i don't i was just going to come to that which i don't think will happen uh if that happens then you yeah, see the thing is yes money and everything but uh, 
Salah does not seem like a player who would like to let his legacy go to absolute waste. The point Precisely. is that if Salah moves to Man City or Chelsea, his legacy as a Liverpool player is done. Is done. Right? Is done. Is done. Right. Whatever he has achieved here, Liverpool fans are very passionate, but they don't forget. Honestly, right. You know, players like Raheem Sterling. I don't even hate Sterling for leaving. Honestly, I'm I'm telling you right now, Sterling is booed every time he plays at Anfield. I don't yeah, hate yeah. Sterling for leaving Liverpool because when he when he was here, Brendan Rodgers was the manager. He had an absolutely weird team around him. He was playing wing back and all that. I don't, but he still gets booed. Can you yeah. imagine a guy like Salah who achieved so much and then he says he wants to go to Man City? Yeah, and it again, would it be like the be, yeah ultimate betrayal. Yeah. So, but one club I can think of probably Juventus. I don't know. Uh, probably again, but again, I don't know an awful lot about Italian football, so I won't be okay. able to comment in detail. Juventus. Bayern again, I don't. See, I don't see Bayern as an yeah. option. Uh, look, the best place for him is at Liverpool. Let's be honest. For, right. For him or Liverpool, both. It's just a right. question of getting on the table and agreeing on a certain thing. Right, 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 right. But, but again, let's see if that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, all parties would obviously want a want a fair and you know good output, good outcome to this whole impasse that you have you, that you have reached. Now, just I, you mentioned about Juventus. I, I'm I'm unable to. Re- they signed Lahovic right now in the summer as a right? striker. Yes, as a striker, and I don't know who their you know right line left wing back uh, when when you know players are. But I don't think they'll shell out another, you know, 90, 100 million right now, given that they've already spent 75 or, or 70 million in the summer oh, for Vlaovic. So it doesn't look likely. One option I wanted to ask you, what about Newcastle? You think the owners would not, go not all out on... Dude, so I think that Newcastle will sign players, will sign big players. If you look at Man City when they started... They were not going and signing Haaland and all immediately. They were not going right. and signing David Silva and all. They started with, with players like Roque Santa Cruz. Right. But Newcastle, as much as they have money, right, they are not at that level yet. They are not going to play in the Champions League next season. Right. right. Uh, I think eventually it's a reality of football that, you know, clubs with money will get there. Uh, and I think Newcastle right. will as well. But I don't see Salah or anybody for that matter. For that matter, for example, if you were to sell Timo Werner, do you think Timo Werner accepts a move to Newcastle? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think, so. think so because he hasn't been a long time here to you know truly settle in London to then want a move to stay in the UK. Unlike yeah, Salah, who's been here since his Chelsea days, in fact. And the reason I say Timo Werner is because Timo Werner is obviously a player with immense talent, but he's never been able to <coughs> settle here in England or, or Chelsea. So right. Even though players might think twice about moving to Newcastle. Salah, right now, no chance. I don't think so. Right. Right, right, right. So, you know, let's just hope that you know you guys come at a very happy and amicable solution for all parties. Because otherwise, yeah. uh, you know, it would just be <coughs> what? You know, a very unfortunate outcome that nobody wanted, but it eventually came to yeah to exactly. for us to see. Right now, uh, you know, we're, we're coming towards the end of the episode. Now, just you know, at the top of my head, I thought of you know three things that you know we can. Uh, I just want you know your immediate reaction to it without a thought because, okay. uh, yeah, sure. and that's why I did not uh, mention that in our notes as well. And it's not related yeah. to Liverpool. I mean, one of it okay. is. So yeah. Okay. So first is uh, yeah. Let's go. Lewandowski to Liverpool. No. <laughs> that was pretty straightforward. <laughs> okay. Uh, Eden Hazard is he the worst transfer in football history? No. Okay. What what would be the worst transfer ever in football history if you were to give it a there thought? Are, there are so many. Are um, Juan Sebastian Veron to Man United. Uh, you know, uh, Harry Maguire to Man United. <laughs> I was uh, just coming to that. <laughs> uh, and these are recent ones. Um, yeah. Uh, Andy Carroll, Mario Balotelli to Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we, are, we, we, we can go on a 
long video about the disasters long that he made as company. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think Eden Hazard. Yeah, I think he has. Uh, I think he, he. Obviously, one of the things is that he's been very unlucky with injuries. Precisely. But I also feel that you know Hazard. Just say for example, he had issues with his overweight. Uh, he came back right. training overweight. Right, right, right. I think that he, and again, this is nothing against Hazard. Uh, but I think he. Maybe he's not happy in Spain or whatever it is, or you know, maybe he's not able to settle at Real Madrid because that has right. happened to a lot of players. Nicolas right, Anelka, right, right. if you you know, for example, he said that it's a very different atmosphere at Real Madrid. Not everybody can settle. Right. right, right. I don't think he's the worst transfer. I think he has been very unlucky with injuries. Uh, okay. Worst transfer, I would say things that just didn't work out. Hazard didn't get too much of a chance to play for yeah Real Madrid also. Yeah, right. Rightfully, no, I wouldn't call him the worst transfer. No. Precisely, you can maybe say that he's the you know most expensive, you know, mistake. unfortunate transfers or most yeah most unfor- most expensive mistake that happened in for him as well. For him as well. For him because as well. Yeah. Yeah, because remember he went to uh, Real Madrid when he was twenty eight, twenty nine. Right. So. There's a good three four years of football left in him. I don't know how now how much, but. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Make make sense, make sense. Now, as a neutral, Eden Hazard coming back to Chelsea. No, that would be looking backwards. That would be looking backwards, right? Similar to I think you man, you tweeted about it. Wijnaldum back to Liverpool. That is also the chapter is done yeah, now. Are, I I mean, look, yeah, players play their roles, uh, but you can't do that. Why would you Eden Hazard back at Chelsea? I mean, yes, sentimentally you'd love it, but right. You have to understand this is a player that has not played for three years. Correct. Not done well for three years. Why do you want another liability? Right. I mean, I'm right, sorry right, to right. put it so bluntly, but yeah, yeah, you know, rightfully so. Like, yeah, like rationally, if you ask me, it's not a good transfer. But you know, given that you know, see, Hazard has had a more stature in the Chelsea fans than if you compare it to Van Aldem in Liverpool fans. Exactly. So obviously, yeah. it will. It, it's, yeah, he's times a better player also. Exactly. Exactly. So it's it's like that uh, you know that that feel good factor oh, that you got in Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, yeah. you knew that it did not make any sense but you just wanted it. It's so, a sentimental yeah, it would it be is, a it is a sentimental sentimental thing. Okay. Uh I think we'll have we have time for like one or two more. One is uh Thomas Tuchel, uh, sorry, Jurgen Klopp's next destination. Uh, hopefully Liverpool, hopefully extra. <laughs> Same destination is the next destination. Hopefully, right. Liverpool back. Back to Liverpool. Right. <laughs> Dude, so I, uh, you know, I, there's a very weird thing. Of course, it will, uh, very few chances, very less chance of that this happening. But uh, why not give Klopp the year off? Let okay. Pep manage the team. Not Pep Guardiola. <laughs> Pep Linders. Uh, Pep Linders, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second, Let my... Pep Linders manage the team in the meanwhile. Because yeah. look, you can't get a very good manager for one year. Right. Let Pep Linder manage the team for one year and then get, right. get Klopp back after his sabbatical. Right. I mean, Pep Linders is nowhere close to Klopp, but again, <laughs> this is a out of the box thinking thing kind of a thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pochettino or Ten Hag, who should be the next United manager? I think United should take a punt with Ten Hag. Uh, okay. I think Pochettino, uh, one thing that obviously works in his favor is that he's got Premier League experience. But I right. think uh, Ten Hag will br- bring a lot of fresh ideas. Uh, it will be interesting to see if Ten Hag wants to leave Ajax. That is another thing. Right. Why is everyone assuming that, you know, uh, you know Ten Hag will just quit everything and run to uh, Man United? Pep, is going, Pep Guardiola is going to leave in 2023. City right. might be looking for another, you know, exciting manager. Right, right. Those are those are clubs that are there, right? If Klopp yeah. leaves in twenty twenty four, maybe Liverpool are looking at Ten Hag. Yeah, even even Chelsea yeah. for that matter. If Tuchel Chelsea decides might, not to I renew his contract, yeah, exactly. If Tuchel does not get along with the new owners, he decides to move on. Maybe Chelsea is looking at Ten Hag. Right. So you you never know. I think that Ten Hag is a very good manager, honestly. But I'll be honest with you, Rohan. I have not seen Ajax play. Yeah, neither and have I. I. Neither have I. Right. I've just relied on stats and that they have been a selling club for a very long time. Art so, they produce good talent. Yeah. 
yeah that's what i i think i i know of uh ten hag so right but i think united should take a punt with him uh, from a neutral point of point of view but again it's not like it's a foregone conclusion that ten hag will just Precisely. drop everything and so i want to go to united exactly exactly unfortunately the united name has not has not heralded the value that it had you know maybe 10 yeah. years back which is not the exactly. case now and finally the world cup is coming 2022 now i support france so i'll i'll not the way i support chelsea of course but i just like to watch france play and i support them so deschamp might retire after the world cup irrespective yeah. of the result so zidane to he- head the fr- french national team what are what are your thoughts on that yes definitely yes yeah so i'll tell you what rohan zidane gets very less credit as a manager I right. think he's an excellent manager. He's very, very, very good. He's he's so good as a manager. He gets very less credit as a manager because of the fact that that you know he's always had these superstars around him. Right. But look what right. he did with those superstars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three peat of the UCL. It's not a small thing. Precisely. Right. Precisely. So, uh, you know, uh, it would be France would be should be absolutely on board with this. I I I'm behind that. If I was I mean, a France fan, I would be delighted if Zidane was the next manager. Right, right, and I think Zidane to PSG doesn't make that much sense rather than Zidane to France because if you are honestly speaking, if you have managed a Madrid side that has won the Champions League three times in a row, honestly yeah. going to PSG would be a step down. It's rather better yeah. to go up and manage the national yeah. team and you know win honors with them. Correct, and uh, you know one thing you mentioned that. he's you know he's underrated even though he won the three peat i think he's more underrated underrated and deserves more credit for you know getting and managing the egos of all the superstars around him exactly. which pochettino exactly. probably is not able to do at psg exactly exactly it is it's 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 amazing what zidane has achieved at real madrid 100% i think france if that happens Fr- french fans should be very happy right Right, right, right. Great. So I think with that, I think we have reached the conclusion of today's episode. Before I let you go, we are gonna. Who are you gonna support in this World Cup? That is, that is my question. Or who? Okay, who do you like to watch internationally rather than support? I like to watch how Netherlands play now. Um, okay. I I used to be, uh, you know, um, I used to enjoy Spain watching them play football. Uh. I I also think that uh, some international football is very nice here. You you get to see very <laughs> different styles. But to right. answer your question, I would say Netherlands. Netherlands is okay. one team that I like to watch. Okay, okay, good to see that we lock horns here as well with supporting different international <laughs> teams. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Great. Right. So with that, we have reached the conclusion of today's episode. Nidhi Bhai, thank you so much again for taking More the time out and. and coming uh, please, coming back to please hit the like button guys and subscribe to the match ball podcast yes guys if you have made it this far please do consider subscribing please subscribe please like please comment give us all feedback and you know subscribe to nidhi's channel as well nidhi and manas's channel manas and the monk they just hit 2000 subscribers and to think that you know we had them on when they were at i think 930 something subscribers and then they are back after after 2k you know that's a big uh, big achievement and i know that they are not numbers guys numbers people numbers guys the aim is not numbers but i'm sure they must enjoy over looking at these numbers that that is it for sure it feels nice it feels nice it does feel nice a statistical validation of whatever you're doing exactly. so rightfully so uh, please guys so do subscribe to nidhi's channel and nidhi the nidhi's and manas's channel which is manas and the monk as always all the socials of nidhi and manas would be in the description my socials and sid socials would also be in the description thank you nidhi any last words yeah. Thank you so much for having me on here. It is absolutely lovely to be here any time um, that you call me. But yeah, I mean, we'd love to have you as well on Menace in the Mog someday. Uh, let's plan something. Yes. But just to repeat, please make sure that you like this video. Subscribe, karo yar. Yes, yes, for sure. You know, I mean, I would be more than honored to you know feature on your channel. And uh, yeah, let's hope that we you know record more and more videos in the future. Okay. So thank you, Nidhi, for coming. Thank you, everyone who has made it this far. uh you know please subscribe please uh, give us any and every feedback which is always welcome 
Thank you for uh, tuning in. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Stay safe and mask up. Goodbye. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.